Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we are celebrating this octave of Christmas when we are recognizing every day the birth of Christ. During the Christmas season, we offer up to you this week as we begin this week, and we ask that we may always be open to where you are calling us and where you are leading us as we are also in transition from one year calendar year to another. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today is, of course, the 26th of December. And the 26th of December, besides the fact it's my cousin's birthday, it is also, by the way, the always the uh, feast of the martyrdom of St. Stephen. Now, you know the story of St. Stephen. What is important with St. Stephen is that not only is his martyrdom recorded in the uh, Acts of the Apostles, he is a deacon and he is stoned to death. The person who enables the stoning to death is none other than a man who will later be called St. Paul. He at the time is called Saul. And Saul is filled with this intense zeal for the Jewish law. And of course, what's happening is here they are preaching the gospel, which uh, many of the Jewish community does not understand what's happening. You can't really, you, you can't blame them at, at all either, because all of a sudden they're seeing this man following who Josephus described as Christus. They're following this man called Christus and Jesus Christ, and they're saying, but they're, he's leading their people to follow a set of rules that is not what we believe. And in fact, what we understand as Christians is the law that the Jews follow is now on our hearts, and the law comes down to love God and love neighbor, which is also the law that the Jews follow from the book of Deuteronomy, among other places. And so, we understand all of that. We understand that message. We understand that this is what's happening. So it's showing this intense division between the Jews and the Christians. And of course, today we understand there is the Jewish faith who are the chosen people. To this day, by the way, they are the chosen people. And there's the Christian faith, which is an offshoot of the Jewish faith. Well, we're looking at where this begins. Something I've been thinking about, because it's fascinating, because the day after Christmas, I, I always get fascinated by this, the day after Christmas, we celebrate a martyrdom. So it's during this joyful time, and isn't this wonderful, and everything's going great, and we're celebrating Christmas, and fa-la-la-la, and all the other stuff, and the following day, we're celebrating a martyrdom. Now, you know that the word martyr comes from, uh, I believe it's the Greek, or it's, I think it's the Greek, but anyway, martyr actually means witness. And one of the things that I recognized, uh, kind of thinking this over, and especially in light of some of the events going on in our world, in our country, and some of the philosophies coming out, he is a witness, not only to the people of his time, but he's a witness to the people of our time. And this is an important message to make. For example, one of the things that people are preaching, or teaching, rather, better way to put it, is that Jesus never existed. And, you know, they'll look at all kinds of things to try to prove that Jesus never existed. But one of the signs that we have of the presence of Christ, that Jesus, in fact, not only existed, but he is who he says he is, is the testimony of the martyrs, the people who literally went to their deaths, recognizing that they had encountered Christ and Christ is real. One of the things I like to teach, and, and it's obviously not in regards to Stephen, although that's clearly there, and we see it in the, in the account, which I'll talk about in a minute, is 1 Corinthians 15, which is the oldest eyewitness account that we have 
uh, canonically in the Bible. The Gospels are not eyewitness accounts. And we talked about that a couple of weeks ago or several weeks ago with uh, Mark Hart. But the Gospels are not eyewitness accounts. But Paul's words are. And Paul writes about how, in fact, Jesus appeared to 500 of the brothers, as he called them. And he said, last of all, he appeared to me. And then, of course, we see in today's account, which uh, which may be part of the 500, is he appears to Stephen as Stephen is being stoned to death. And, you know, it, it's it's really so every time I see that passage, I think of we'll talk about putting uh, oil on the fire because now here he is being stoned to death for embracing Jesus. And he looks up and he says, I see Jesus here now, which gets everyone even more angry and they throw more stones. Um but these are testimonies, but not only to the people of that time, but the people of our time. So when I bring up that 1 Corinthians 15 is the oldest eyewitness account we have uh, of the resurrection of Jesus, I also bring up that Paul went to his death proclaiming that Jesus resurrected from the dead. And so his death then is a testimony to us also today, back then also, but to us today. And his testimony, well, the same thing with Stephen. He is a martyr, so he is testifying to us then so that we understand his testimony now. Interesting. We'll talk more about this on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WEZE. We'll be right back right after this. You can now leave a message for us, which we can air and discuss on this program. Just call 617-297-7452. That's 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. Feel free to call, leave a comment, a question, or even feedback, and we may play it on the air. I can discuss your comment or question as well, so give that a try. 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out catholictv.com. And don't forget our own website, catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. Check out our website. Check out the archives of the show. Check out our Substack newsletter. Check out all kinds of things over there at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. And don't forget, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, you can leave comments below. So check that out as well. So if you're watching this and and if you haven't seen the YouTube videos, uh, I'm going to put them over on uh, CatholicAudioMeter.com. You'll notice that you can't see me uh, because it's really the audio. But if you're, and there are people who are doing that. They're checking it out. So if you're watching this on YouTube, then definitely check out uh, the, or, or leave a comment below. And, you know, you can comment to us from CatholicAudioMeter.com. So here we are talking about Stephen as a witness his martyrdom. Now, probably one of my favorite examples of this comes comes from someone who did not live during uh, the time Jesus was walking on the earth. He did not live during the Acts of the Apostles, and he did not die a martyr. And you go, well, then what kind of a witness does he have? An extremely powerful one. And that is now the late, but a very powerful man by the name of Chuck Colson. Now, I say powerful man. Well, in a worldly sense, he was. And in a Christian sense, he still is. Oh, there you go. That's kind of interesting. So let us let me talk about what I'm, what, uh, I'm referring to. Um, in one of his books, I think it was called On Fire or Fire, Fire on High. I'll have to look out which book it was. Um, he talks about... If you don't know who Chuck Colson was, Chuck Colson was the chief of staff for Richard Nixon. 
And so therefore, you had the fall of Richard Nixon during the time of Watergate. And one of the things that happened is he was the chief of staff. So he was the assistant to the most powerful man in the world, which makes him one of the most powerful men in the world. He said, literally, I could just pick up the phone and there'd be Air Force One waiting for me at the tarmac. Uh, People would cry in his office uh, when he would have to fire them. He was an intensely powerful man. And he was uh, uh, part of the uh, group of men who were sentenced and did time in prison uh, for the Watergate uh, whole affair. And he explained that here he was this most powerful man and, you know, his whole cover-up of the whole Watergate thing lasted three days. He says, our whole cover-up lasted three days. He says, you know, if Jesus did not resurrect from the dead, there is no way these guys who were nothing more than fishermen for the most part and tax collector and everything else... And all these people who were not movers and shakers, they were not the powerful people like he was. He says, there's no way they could keep that a secret. If, the, if these powerful people could only keep the secret for the cover up for, for three days. And he said, or maybe it was three weeks. It's three something. And it wasn't three years or three months. So he said, that is another proof of their uh, the the Jesus resurrect from the dead, and he says there were Peter would have given a deathbed confession, and as we see, Saint Stephen did not give a deathbed confession. We saw the account of his death. He recognized that Jesus, in fact, exists and resurrection from the dead. Have a blessed week. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to Saint Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.